Hey YouTube, it's Icy, and welcome to the 216th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, I wanted to say this is an absolutely incredible time to be a part of the world of jailbreaking. And the reason for that is not only the new 8.1 Pangu jailbreak, but also the even newer Taiji jailbreak for up to iOS 8.1.1, the latest public firmware as of recording this video. And before we get into all of that, I wanted to say that I will actually include annotations on the screen now if you're on the desktop version of YouTube to kind of skip around throughout different segments of this video, depending on which portion that you want to watch. So it is crucial that you view this video again on desktop. Top. And what we're going to be discussing in today's episode is the new Taiji jailbreak, whether said utility is legitimate and safe to use, if you should upgrade from 8.1 to 8.1.1, how to update your Taiji jailbreak to version 1.1.0 if you've already jailbroken, a Mac iteration of the utility, as well as what's next for jailbreaking with Apple's inevitable release of the upcoming iOS 8.2 firmware. But before we get into that, let's talk about the next generation iPhone. Yes, what will probably be called the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus, but we're not talking about the bigger screen sizes this time around, we're actually talking about a smaller one. So according to a new rumor, Apple will allegedly revive the four inch iPhone series in their next generation iPhone sometime in early 2015. And this report started to propagate throughout the Apple blogosphere all of said reports citing quote unnamed Asian sources. So we have absolutely no clue where this report originated from. However, it makes sense when you think about it, both from an app development standpoint as well as a usability standpoint. Because I personally happen to know a number of people who would prefer to use a four inch iPhone over the larger 4.7 inch iPhone 6, which is actually the smallest iPhone that you can buy now with the latest hardware. Of course, you can also pick up a phablet class iPhone 6 plus with a massive 5.5 inch screen measuring diagonally, but that's a completely different story. So it'll definitely be interesting to see what happens. Previously, we were under the impression that Apple would kind of slowly start to phase out the four inch screen size after the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Of course, they would have kept the iPhone 5S around for quite a while and sell it at a lower price point, which makes sense. That's what they've done. They just recently phased out the iPhone 4 in iOS 8. They're still selling the iPhone 4S even, which measures in with a display size of just 3.5 inches, significantly smaller than the now 4.7 inch standard iPhone 6. Of course, it's never too early for next generation iPhone rumors, and I'd actually love to hear your thoughts on Apple possibly reviving their four inch iPhone series down below in the comment section. So just be sure to let me know. And now next up, let's kind of move on to discuss the Taiji jailbreak for iOS 8 through 8.1.1. So yes, if you happen to miss it this past week, Taiji released a new jailbreak utility. And some of you may be unfamiliar with the team. Actually, they haven't even released a jailbreak utility up until this point. So this is absolutely crucial for them. And let's discuss the safety and the security involved in creating Taiji and when jailbreaking with it, being the end user, the end jailbreaker in this case. So while it doesn't happen often, the emergence of a new jailbreak, especially from again, a relatively new team to the previously sparse jailbreak scene will never fail to prompt questions surrounding said jailbreak's legitimacy. Now to give you guys some background details, Taiji actually does have a history in the world of jailbreaking. They previously attempted to fund the evaders in creating their evasion 7 jailbreak utility however after a community uproar for the inclusion of a third-party Chinese distribution platform bundled into the Chinese evasion 7 jailbreak utility for again Chinese based jailbroken devices the team actually opted to give the funds back to Taiji and then that was it until now and until the new Taiji jailbreak utility. So again, the question that we're faced with now is whether Taiji is actually safe. Well, according to MuscleNerd, the primary public figure of those who are starting to become the quantum kings of jailbreaking, again, the evaders, Taiji is completely safe. In fact, the new Taiji jailbreak is so safe that the hacker not only states that the untether package the portion of the jailbreak that enables a device to reboot without the assistance of a computer while enabling root access for the use of third-party tweaks 
which in essence is the very foundation of a jailbreak, is quote, much more transparent than Pangu, but he also recommends that jailbreakers on 8.1 upgrade to 8.1.1 and utilize Taiji to re-jailbreak on 8.1.1. And I'm actually going to go through the quick steps of upgrading from 8.1 to 8.1.1 with you guys in a relatively painless manner. But before we do that, I also wanted to state that Sarek, the creator of Cydia, has also released a public announcement regarding Taiji and its legitimacy. So it's actually pretty interesting because as stated by Sarek, he reminds us that no jailbreak isn't without its possible backdoor and that it could be in certain cases extremely hard to detect such a bug. And in his update, he actually stated that there would be other hackers more qualified to comment on whether Taiji is safe. And with that said, let's kind of loop back into what Muscle Nerd stated. So in a series of updates, Muscle Nerd reported his findings after investigating the new 8.1.1 Taiji jailbreak over a few days. So to summarize, the tool contains, quote, Quote, nothing too unsettling and that it merely features quote some light device fingerprinting and for those of you unfamiliar with the term muscle nerd went on to elaborate that taiji creates an empty log file on a pc in addition to the exe or executable program and then from there quote when you run the tool it'll log the urls accessed in the log or timestamp log file so in other words absolutely nothing malicious will happen when utilizing taiji and when one jailbreaker asked muzzle nerd for an example he provided such an example and he said quote nothing outlandish so this is a great time to jailbreak on either ios 8.1 using pangu or 8.1.1 using Taiji, which is actually apparently more transparent than Pangu, according to Muscle Nerd. So if you guys are interested in updating, all you have to do is actually take screenshots of the packages that you have installed inside of Cydia. This is the best method for upgrading because there are a few different packages available inside of Cydia that will kind of remember which packages you have installed. And then when you restore from your backup and then install that tweak again, it will go back and install all of the previous packages that you had installed. However, some users are reporting significant complications with such packages. So if you want to do it as painless as possible, all you have to do again is go to the installed packages inside of Cydia, take screenshots of every single one of them, and then create a backup inside of iTunes restore to iOS 8.1.1, jailbreak using Taiji, and then once you're jailbroken and you have City and everything's working as it should, restore from your backup inside of iTunes to retrieve all data back to your device. From there, once you have your screenshots that you took previously before you actually created the backup, just reference those and inside of Cydia, all you have to do is just search for the packages again and then install them. But before you actually install them, tap on continue queuing. From there, it will add all of the packages to your queue and you can go through and add every single package that you had previously installed extremely fast. It may only take you a few minutes, even if you have up to 30 different packages installed. That's just an example, but for me, it only took two minutes to go through and to search and to queue up everything. And then also, once you install all of your packages, if you have something like Apex 2 or anything that really affects icon rearrangement, then it will actually remember thanks to the backup that you created. So contrary to popular belief, a lot of settings for jailbreak tweaks are actually saved when you create a backup inside of iTunes. And of course, when you restore from said backup and then install the tweaks back onto your device, you'll definitely notice that. So that's the method that I always recommend when upgrading from one jailbreak to the next. I've actually never really previously detailed it, but that's the only way to ensure an absolutely safe upgrade again from iOS 8.1 to 8.1.1 and to ensure that you don't encounter any issues along the way. And speaking of upgrading, let's actually discuss updating to the all new Taiji 1.1.0 jailbreak if you've already jailbroken using a previous iteration of Taiji. So while other jailbreak utilities have delivered updates via the default Cydia repository. For example, an untethered package would be made available for direct install on a device that was already jailbroken to take full advantage of the latest updates without having to re-jailbreak. Taiji is slightly different, which is the reason
reason why I'm including this step-by-step -step guide, it's actually extremely easy and really convenient too. And the reason why it isn't available on a default repository is because Taiji wanted to get it issued as quickly as possible to again rectify sandbox complications. So I definitely recommend updating and if you have yet to jailbreak and you're interested in jailbreaking 8.1.1, if you follow my untethered jailbreak tutorial, then you will actually have the latest version of the Taiji jailbreak. But otherwise, if you've already jailbroken and you're watching this video after the fact, then what you have to do is go inside of Cydia, go to the sources tab at the bottom. It's actually the second option in the bottom nav bar and then tap on edit up in the top right hand corner followed by add in the top left hand corner and then enter the following repository http colon forward slash forward slash apt dot taiji dot com and from there after it refreshes simply return to Cydia go into the repository and then install the taiji 8.0 through 8.1.1 untether update so it's actually quite simple but hopefully moving forward we can expect to see subsequent untether package updates available in the default SARC repository and with that said also inside of that repo that I had you guys add to update to version 1.1.0 1.1.0, there is an AFC2 package or Apple File Conduit. And essentially when it's installed, it prevents the full browsing of a device's file system over USB. It's definitely recommended for security reasons. However, if you like to use something like iFunbox to again, transfer files back and forth between your device and you wanna browse the file system in its entirety, then you will need to uninstall the AFC2 package. And if you don't have it installed, you add that repo simply install it and then remove it from there it should work and it should function properly again though I don't recommend it and I'd recommend just leaving it the way Taiji does by default even though Pangu doesn't include the AFC2 file but with that said let's actually go ahead and move on and discuss the possibility of Taiji for Mac OS X or OS 10 so just like Pangu the original Pangu for iOS 8 jailbreak utility was exclusive to Windows based PC versions just like Taiji is right now. That could change in the future and hopefully Taiji does have plans to bring their jailbreak over to Mac users. But if you own a Mac, it's incredibly simple to jailbreak using Taiji. If you don't have access to a Windows-based PC, you can do it either via one of two methods. The first one is actually by partitioning your hard drive and then from there installing Windows on it using Bootcamp. It's simply built into OS X or what you can do is you can actually set up a virtual machine inside of a virtual environment, which means you actually don't have to leave the comforts of something like OS 10 Yosemite. And there are numerous tutorials online for both. I know it's an inconvenience, but if you want to jailbreak on 8.1.1, that's just what you're going to have to do because unfortunately Apple is no longer signing 8.1, which means you won't be able to downgrade back to 8.1 and use the Pangu for Mac utility. All right, and finally, kind of wrapping things up here, Taiji actually issued an official statement as well concerning their jailbreak and why they released it for 8.1.1, because previously it was seen by everyone that no one would release a jailbreak for the firmware as it is simply a minor release. So why did they release their utility and seemingly burn through exploits? Well, that's an absolutely great question and they did answer it and address it. They stated that they do have a method to jailbreak 8.2 and that they didn't disclose the vulnerabilities in their utility to jailbreak 8.1.1 and that they intend on surprising the public in every subsequent iOS 8 release. So it seems like they're keen on jailbreaking every firmware for iOS 8. Who knows if that could happen though? That seems like an absolutely outlandish task, but only time will tell. We'll see if Pangu and Taiji are both up to the task because Taiji actually issued a formal invitation to Pangu for the teams to work together in collaboration with one another on future utilities. So we'll see what's going to happen in the future, but this is an absolutely awesome time for jailbreaking. As I mentioned toward the beginning of this episode, it seems like we're going to start seeing jailbreaks more and more frequently because of course jailbreaking was previously starting to seem kind of sparse because we only received one utility for each major firmware for the most part from iOS 6 to iOS 7. That is until Pangu stepped in with their 7.1.2 jailbreak. All right, now that's everything I want to discuss in this week's episode, mostly related to jailbreaking, as well as briefly touching on an all new iPhone 6S rumor. So if you guys like this video, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you're interested in earning paid apps, gift cards, and bigger electronic devices, just be sure to visit bit.ly forward slash get free app life or just freeapplife.com inside of mobile Safari. 
Safari. And if you're on iOS 8, after tapping download, press the home button and open the app. From there, download and install the temporary secure profile, which is strictly used for associating your device with its proper account in a more secure manner on the latest firmware. It's actually never even fully installed on your devices. It's immediately deleted once your account has either been created or reassociated. From there, simply download sponsored apps for points, refer friends for even more, and redeem said points for the aforementioned prizes. All right, and kind of as a concluding note, we are planning on holding some new giveaways on Free App Life soon, so just be sure to visit Free App Life's Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash free app life to ensure that you don't miss out. Also, if you don't know what to leave in the comments section, try answering the question of the day. And for this week's episode, I think I'm going to make it related to the upcoming iPhone 6s and this latest rumor. What do you guys think again about a four inch iPhone 6s? Let me know down below in the comments or on best tech info. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos covering various things ranging from jailbreaking to the forthcoming Apple Watch, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google Plus, follow me on Instagram at ICUID and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. I definitely have some exciting things planned for you guys in the foreseeable future, so just be sure to stay tuned and click that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.